Chapter 11 Captured Drake tumbled down inside the enormous green tube of the flower stem. It spat him out on the dirt. Drake stood up and looked around. He was underground. As his eyes adjusted to the dim light, he heard a voice. Drake, over here. Drake ran toward the voice and discovered Breen behind metal bars trapped in a cave. Breen, I'm so glad I found you, he yelled. He grabbed the bars and gave them a tug. They didn't budge. What happened? Who put you in here? It's terrible, Breen answered. An evil ogre scooped me up and brought me here. He's coming back to eat me. An ogre? Drake asked. You mean like a big mean giant? Breen nodded. Can you get me out of here, Drake? Drake studied the cave. He wouldn't be able to bend the thick metal bars. He didn't see a way out. What can I do? He wondered. Suddenly, the ground beneath his feet began to shake. The ogre is coming back, Breen yelled. Fee fi fo fom I need food in my tum tum, the ogre chanted. Drake turned to see an enormous creature with a big belly stomping toward them. Run, Drake, save yourself, Breen shouted. If you get eaten, you'll never save your land. Go, now. Breen's right. If I don't leave now, I may never find Feline, Drake thought. But I can't leave her here to get eaten. He threw his body in front of the cave. The ogre roared as he thumped toward Drake. Arr! Chapter 12 The Spring Dragon I can't let the ogre hurt you, Breen, Drake yelled. He bravely faced the ogre. If you want Breen, you'll have to go through me, he called out. The ogre stomped up to Drake. Drake could feel the monster's hot breath on his face. Stay back, Drake warned, bawling his hands into fists. The ogre ignored Drake. He moved past him and pulled apart the bar on the cave with his strong arms. Breen calmly stepped through the opening. Thanks, Blurp, Breen said. Did I do a good pretending job? Blurp asked. Breen nodded. The best. Drake stared at them. You mean he's not dangerous? Drake asked Breen. Blurp? No, he's a softie, Breen said. She waved to the ogre. See you later. The ogre marched off. That was another trick? Drake asked, but he wasn't angry with Breen. A wave of relief washed over him. Another test, and you passed, Breen said. You stayed to protect me when you could have run away to save yourself. Now Feline knows you can be trusted. Drake's heart was still pounding. That was a pretty scary test. Feline has to be careful, Drake, Breen said. There are greedy people in the world, people who would steal her and use her powers just for themselves. That is why she lives in secret and why she will only help those who are worthy. So does that mean I get to see Feline now? Drake asked. Breen grinned. Follow me. She led him out of the cave. Breen led Drake into a bright meadow. A beautiful green dragon sat on a hill covered with flowers. Her wings looked like big leaves and tiny leaves sprouted from her body. Feline, we made it, Breen said. Her dragon stone began to glow. Breen smiled. Pauline says that you've been very brave and smart, Drake, she said. She will help you. Thank you, Pauline, Drake said. Can we go see my dragon worm? He can take us to Bracken right away. Breen climbed onto Pauline's back. Come on, Drake, she said, helping him up. The spring dragon flapped her wings and flew into the air. They soared over the forests and meadows. Finally, Pauline landed, and Breen and Drake climbed off her back. They walked through the same tunnel as before until they came to a dirt wall. Pauline glowed, and a hole opened up. They stepped back into Inisban Ba. Worm was waiting for them. I knew you would find Pauline, he told Drake. Good job. Thanks, Worm, Drake said. He held out his hand to Breen. Touch Pauline, and then I'll touch Worm, he instructed. Once we're all connected, we can transport. I've never been outside Inisban Ba before, Breen said. This is exciting. She grabbed Drake's hand and put one hand on her dragon. Then Worm transported them all to Bracken in a burst of green light. Chapter 13 Green Drake, Worm, Breen, and Pauline landed in the fields of Bracken. Breen looked around at the cracked earth and withered crops. This will be a very big job for me and Pauline, she said. Curious villagers started to gather around them. Then Drake heard a familiar voice. Drake? He turned to see Bo running toward him. The other dragon masters, Rory, Anna, and Petra, followed him, along with Griffith, the wizard. 
but Bo was running faster than any of them. Bo! Drake cried. He ran up to Bo and hugged him. It's really you. What do you mean? Bo asked. Who else would I be? That's a very long story, Drake said. I'll tell you later. Right now, meet Breen and Falleen the Spring Dragon. They're going to fix Bracken for us. Anna gazed at Falleen with wide eyes. She turned to Breen. Your dragon is beautiful. Even more beautiful than I imagined, Petra said. She is beautiful, Rory agreed. I hope she is powerful too. Just you watch, Breen said. Please stand back, everybody. Everyone made a wide circle around Breen and Falleen. Breen faced her dragon. Her dragon stone glowed. Falleen, please bring the crops back to these fields, she said. Beans, peas, oats, barley, wheat, potatoes, cabbages, carrots, parsnips, spinach. Breen stopped and looked at the dragon masters. Am I forgetting anything? Onions, Drake cried. Don't forget the onions. Flowers will be nice too, Anna added. Breen nodded. And onions and flowers, she told Falleen. The dragon's body began to glow with soft yellow-green light. She closed her eyes. The light traveled through Falleen's body down to her feet and then shot into the ground. The light spread across the brown, broken earth. Falleen is sending her energy into the land, Drake realized. He looked down at his feet and saw the dragon's light glowing beneath them. He felt the dirt start to move, not shake like in an earthquake. The cracks in the earth closed up, then something began to gently push up from under the ground. Breen twirled in a circle around her dragon. Breathless, they all watched as Falleen's glow grew brighter and brighter. Chapter 14 The Dragon Flower Slowly, tiny green shoots sprouted up from the dirt. It's working, Drake cried. Step off the field to make room for the plants. Everyone raced to the huts on the edge of the village. Then they watched the plants grow at amazing speed. They grew taller and taller with each second. Soon, tall stalks of young green wheat waved in one spot. In another, the bushy green leaves of spinach appeared. Drake's heart leapt at the sight of skinny green onion tops growing in neat rows. Falleen's glow slowly faded. Breen stopped spinning. The villagers stared, their mouths open, at the sight of the green crops. Nobody spoke for a moment. Then Rory yelled out, Wow, that was amazing! The villagers let out a cheer. The dragon master and Griffith ran out into the field. Breen was slumped up against Falleen in a circle of yellow and red flowers. The dragon's ears were drooping. What do you think? Breen asked with a happy and proud smile on her face. I think that all those fairy tests were worth it, Drake said. You saved the whole kingdom. Thank you. Thank you both. Yes, thank you, Griffith said. You are one of the most powerful dragons I had ever seen, Falleen. You both must be quite tired. Worm and I can transport you home, Drake offered. That would be very nice, Breen agreed. Her dragonstone glowed. Falleen says she was happy to help you all. Drake and Worm quickly transported Breen and Falleen back to Inispan Ba. I'll miss you, Drake told Breen, even if you did trick me a lot. She grinned. Come back to Inispan Ba anytime, Drake. We can play hide and seek for real. Then Drake and Worm returned to the fields of Bracken. Anna looked closely at the yellow and red flowers. I've never seen flowers like these before, she said. They look like dragons. Drake knelt down to get a better look. You're right, he remarked. The flower looks like a dragon's head, with fire shooting out of it. And the petals look like spikes or horns, Petra added. Fascinating, Griffith said. We should call it a dragon flower, Rory suggested. Anna nodded. That's perfect. Suddenly, they all heard the low rumble of thunder. Dark clouds appeared in the sky. A storm is coming, Petra cried. Rain will be good for the crops, Bo said. I don't think it's a storm, Drake said. Look, Rory cried. Nero the Thunder Dragon flew across the sky. Chapter 15 A New Mission Nero swooped down toward them. Petra's eyes widened. Is the Thunder Dragon going to attack? She asked. No, Griffith said. His Dragon Master is not with him. Rory gasped. I almost forgot about Eco. Eco was Griffith's first student. She had run away with her dragon, Nero, a long time ago. 
Years later, she tried to free King Roland's dragons. She failed and was captured, but Rory helped her escape. Rory had even stayed with Eco for a while. Nero landed next to Worm. The two dragons stared at each other for a moment. Then Drake heard Worm's voice in his head. Nero is worried about Eco, Worm said. He says she is missing. Drake turned to Griffith. Rory and I last saw Eco in Maldred's workshop. Maldred used red dust to make her disappear. We should have tried to find her, or checked on Nero, Rory said. But we've been too busy trying to save Bracken. Griffith frowned. What happened? It's complicated, Drake said. Eco was trying to help Maldred get control of the Naga. I'm not surprised that she was helping a dark wizard, Bo chimed in. Eco just wanted the Naga to be free, Drake explained. And in the end, she ended up helping us, Rory interrupted. Maldred was going to feed us to the Naga. Eco tried to save us. That's when Maldred tossed magic dust on Eco and she disappeared. Griffith stroked his beard. If that is the case, then we must help her. Rory turned to Bo, Petra, and Anna. We need to save her, please? She asked. Drake and I owe her. Of course, Anna said, and Bo and Petra nodded. Then, it looks like we have our next mission, Drake said. We have to find Eco. The End <laughs>